have a number of electrons and protons in your nucleus. This newly charged atom, ion is its name. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the first stop point of this new chapter. It says classify elements as metals, nonmetals, and semi-metals according to their physical properties. So classify means we might be given some information, and using that information, we need to be able to tell, okay, we need to classify them. Are they metals, nonmetals, or semi-metals? And it says according to their physical properties. So before we start, I'll quickly go over again what physical properties were. And for, to be able to understand that, we need to go over it in what states of matter were as well. So you might remember this from your 9 and 10 chemistry, but there's something called solids, liquids, and gas. So if you imagine here, we've got some H2O particles. H2O is the compound water. And if these H2O particles are really close by, they're all here really close together, and all they do is they vibrate on the spots. So they might go back and forth, but just a tiny bit. They're all really close, and they just vibrate. If that happens, we call it a solid. They're not moving much. They're only vibrating on the spot and they're all close together. Whereas if they're moving, so if they're moving side by side, they're sliding past each other, then we call it a liquid. So now they're moving a bit more, but they're still not completely free. They're still connected close together, but they're sliding past each other. Whereas if they're just moving freely by themselves, randomly in random directions, we call that a gas. So these are the states of matter. We have, in this case, if it's H2O, we have, this is called ice, the solid version, and we have liquid water, and this would be gas vapor. So this would be steam if it's a gas form. So these are the different types of states of matter. And the reason why you need to know that is because, for example, melting point is one physical property. And what I mean by that is, for example, when we have solid ice going into liquid, the, the actual temperature at which this happens, when the ice goes into liquid, is called melting point. And it's a physical property because unlike a chemical property, there's no new compound being formed. All that happens is the H2O is released from the actual other H2O molecules and they can slide past each other. There's no new, no new compound being formed. That's why it's called a physical property. A melting point is when it goes from ice to liquid with the example of water. A boiling point is not a physical property and that's when it goes from the liquid state into the gaseous state. So at the actual temperature at which it goes from liquid to gas. Again, that's a physical property because even though something is changing, the H2 molecules are still H2O molecules, even after they've gone to gas form. But they're now they're just flying around in the gas form, whereas beforehand they were sliding past each other. So these are two physical properties. Then we have the thermal conductivity. And that has to do with how thermal means heat. And conductivity means how well it, it can actually transport heat around. So for example, a metal, as you'll find out soon, has a lot higher thermal conductivity than a non-metal. So for example, if you had a saucepan, this is a saucepan here, if the handle itself here were metal, then the actual heat would be transferred and you would feel that on your arms or your hands and you burn yourself, which is why they often have rubber around the actual metal piece. And the reason why they have that rubber is because rubber has low thermal conductivity, which means the rubber protects you from the actual heat being transferred to you. So thermal conductivity refers to how well temperature flows. And electrical conductivity refers to how well electricity flows. So, for example, wood has low electricity, electric conductivity, whereas many of the metals have high electrical conductivity. So non-metals have lower electric conductivity than metals. We've got another physical property called malleability and ductility. Malleability is how well we can make things into sheets. So think about, for example, you know, you have your aluminium sheets and ductility refers to how well we can make things into wire. That's ductility. And many of our metals we can both make into sheets and wire. Appearance, that refers to if something is shiny or dull in appearance. So, for example, most of our metals have a shiny appearance. Most of our non-metals have a dull appearance. And density refers to how much of a certain thing we can find in any given volume. So here we have two of the same volumes. These volumes, so the amount of substance in here, the volume itself, the size of the container is the same. But as you can see, we have maybe about five of these red dots here, and we have maybe 20 here. So the density of how much we can find per given volume is higher here. So this is a high density and lower here. These are some of the physical properties 
melting point, boiling point appearance, thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity, malleability and ductility and density. And now what we have to do is we have to relate that and be able to use that to classify things as elements, as metals, non-metals, or semi-metals. Right, so I've got here, I've got the periodic table. And what you find with this is that you actually have your metals. Most of the metals are from here to here, and we'll talk about more about the next few as well. These are most of your metals, except for hydrogen that's non-metal. We have our semi-metals are here, from boron down to helium. And we'll go over that again more in the video as well in the next video. And then the ones to your right-hand side, so from carbon and down to noble gases, all of these are non-metals. So how do these properties relate to the actual uses? Or how do these properties determine if they're metals, non-metals, or semi-metals? Magnesium is right here. Magnesium would fall on the category of a metal. This is a metal. And the way we know that is if we look at the actual different parts, magnesium has... So I'm going to use red for magnesium. It has a high density, has a high boiling point, and I'll go over again in a second what that means, has a high melting point, has a shiny appearance. You can, it's very ductile, which means we can make it into wires. You can see this is itself as a wire. Uh, sorry, melting means we can make it into sheets, which we can make, we can make magnesium, and ductility refers to if we can make it in a wire. It's also very ductile, so we can see a wire here. It has high electrical connectivity, which means it conducts electricity, and also has high thermal connectivity, and is very generally quite strong as well. So this was one example of a metal, but most of the metals are quite similar as well. Now when it comes to a semi-metal, this one being the semi-metal, silicon, silicon is right here, falls under the area of the semi-metals, and what you'll see is you see these have many of the properties being in between metals and non-metals, that's why they're called semi-metals. Density, it has a medium density, especially compared to our metals. It has a that's the one big difference. It actually has a high melting point and a high boiling point, sometimes even higher than the metals. I'll know, we'll go over that soon in a couple of years' time. But they have very high melting and boiling points. They are sort of moderately, again, medium malleability, so you can make them to sheets at an okay pace, but not perfect. And it also wires, not really, but a bit, so it's moderate. Appearance, they are somewhat shiny. So the other ones were shiny. These are a bit shiny. So you can see from the picture, they're a bit shiny. It has a in medium electrical conductivity as opposed to high for the metals. Medium thermal conductivity. And a medium to high strength as well. So these are not as, for most of these properties, they're not as high as for the metals, but they are higher than non-metals. I'll go over the example of non-metal now. And we have sulfur as a non-metal. So for sulfur, density tends to be quite low, low density. It tends to have a low boiling point, or especially low compared to your metals, and a lower melting point. It is not malleable, so it's non-malleable and non-ductile, which means we can't make it into wire or sheets, because it's quite brittle. So it's actually brittle, so it's not, we can't make it into wires or sheets. Its appearance tends to be dull. Dull, dull, so this is dull, it's not shiny compared to the other ones. It has low electric conductivity, which means it doesn't conduct electricity. And it has low thermal conductivity, which means it doesn't conduct heat. And overall low strength compared to some of the other ones. Right? So these are some of the properties. And as you can see, they all have different types of these physical properties. And what you tend to find, you know, even though we use magnesium as an example for the metals, but it tends to be quite stable for all the metals. They have the same kind of properties when it comes to these physical properties. Same thing for the same metals. They tend to have the same ones as silicon. They're quite similar. That's why we classify them in that area. And same with sulfur. Sulfur is an example of a non-metal. But most of the other non-metals are quite similar when it comes to these properties. So what you need to do is you need to, if, for example, you know, you, you get given what kind of physical properties does calcium have, which is this one here. You need to be able to tell, okay, it would have a high melting point and boiling point, etc. So you should know what makes a what makes a non-metal, what makes a metal, and what makes a semi-metal. And then if someone asks, you know, this 
part of the period table is is now this element what is it non-metal, metal, or not, or semi-metal? And then you also need to be able to rate that to physical properties. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.